Okay, welcome to our video on comparative writing skills. So this uh, lecture today will build upon skills from Year 11 English. So what is your assessor looking for? It's really important to have a good idea of what you need to do before you start. Here are some points that are really essential. So you want to go beyond a general understanding of plot and character. You will need to present a fresh and holistic interpretation based off the ideas and themes in the text. You should be able to elaborate, add detail, but also analyse. When you're analysing, you should consider looking at this through the world of the text. These texts are set in a very different era with very different values. When writing, you will need to have balanced evidence. You will need examples and quotations from both texts, and you should keep looking for new examples to make your writing stand out from other essays. It is an essential part of this course that your essay compares and contrasts, which means that you analyse the similarities and the differences. An important thing to note is that these texts and the examples are not the same. Look for the similarity, but you should always explore at every opportunity where you can the differences. Lastly, you will also be assessed on your ability to have expressive and fluent writing vocabulary, spelling, complexity of ideas and sentence structure are all parts of this assessment. Today we're going to go through some general advice for students, so simple things that you can do to ensure that you're hitting the key criteria um, and improving your writing all before the SAC. Tip number one. So you should choose a structure that suits the question and your skill set. Most of you will have learned across year 11 and year 12 a couple of different ways of writing a comparative essay. They're explored here in the table. My favourite one is the side-by-side -side comparison where you look at the key idea and include evidence from text A and text B. This requires you to have three clearly different ideas and multiple examples from text A and text B in every paragraph. This is a more thorough way of comparing. A more simple way that you may have been taught in year 11 includes where you write one paragraph on text A, one paragraph on text B, where you make some comparisons to the first paragraph, and then your last paragraph has comparisons with A and B in the same paragraph. You, should, you can use this structure when you feel that you don't have a lot of ideas. Um, the weakness of this is sometimes it turns into storytelling and it shows insufficient evidence. And it's just a bit more of a more simple way of structuring it. But again, you have to respond on the day in the sack with whatever formula suits the question, suits the ideas you come up with and suits your own personal skill set. The other thing that you should be doing in the lead up to the SAC is planning. So planning is essential to success. It's important that you unpack a huge range of essay topics where you can deconstruct the essay. So you need to continue to plan by unpacking the topic. So what are the key words? What is this essay asking you about these texts? What are the big ideas? that you could write a contention for that essay topic and that you could plan out three big ideas that you would talk about with the following evidence. I personally think that it's quite ineffective planning if you don't go and get not just the example but then the quotes for that example because working with your quotes now is really important to learning them. While this text um, and due to the fact that we're in COVID-19, you may have extra access to quotes at the moment. It won't be the case on the examination. 
and it also detracts from your writing time that you have to go and find evidence. So it's essential that when you plan, pick a range of essay topics, you can draw them on a piece of paper or you can type them up, but you should have a contention, topic sentences, examples, but also the quotes. Here's an example of what this would look like. So I've written out the question at the top and I've highlighted the keywords. Around those keywords, I've kind of shown my thinking. So what those keywords could mean and what ideas I could talk about in relation to those keywords. So for instance, compare how the dressmaker and the crucible examine judgment. So I've said, well, what does judgment mean? So judgment from the community, judgment of others, judgment of myself. But also what does forgiveness mean? So am I seeking forgiveness from others? What happens if I never have forgiveness? Uh, what about forgiveness of myself? And I've also gone up and I've looked at the quotes and I've said, okay, um, the first quote's from Elizabeth. It talks about internal judgment. And so does this quote from Tilly about this black thing that she carries around inside of her. I've then written below what I'm going to talk about in each of my paragraphs. And I've just labelled them one, two, and three. You'll notice that they're not in full um, topic sentences at the moment, and that's fine. So in paragraph one, I'm going to talk about judgment in insular communities. I'm going to discuss Abigail's reputation about the blacking of her name and about Goody Proctor as a gossiping liar. I'll then look a bit closely at Tilly and the way she was judged at the races and at the dance for her obscene frock and other comments about her being royalty. See how I've just gone and gotten a few quotes that are going to assist me in unpacking. Paragraph two is going to be about the forgiveness um, of others, but also forgiveness from others. So I'm going to depict in this paragraph about Marigold's revenge, about people who understand or people not being sorry but also John and Elizabeth's relationship and about that magistrate that sits in your heart quotes. Lastly, I'm going to challenge the topic a little bit and I'm going to talk about the consequences. So the consequences of judgment overall or what happens if there is a lack of forgiveness. So looking at Tilly burning down the town about the pain that they deserve and no longer having a curse but also contrasting that with Reverend Hale's regrets about blood on his head. So from there, I think I would be able to write a pretty com compelling essay. Um, so again, it's important, the key features, unpack, get your topic sentences, get your evidence um, and get your quotes, please. Tip number three. So you should ensure that your introduction introduces both texts, but also that your introduction is fluent, well expressed, clear. This is the first thing your assessor is going to read. So if your introduction is a bit skew if, um, it's going to set the tone for the rest of your essay. I've color coded here the way that you could introduce your essay. So having a general opening sentence that covers what both of these texts are about thematically. I'm then going to give the details of text A, including the title, the author, era, setting and plot, uh, and the titles, the similar title, director, author, setting plot for text B. It's important that you kind of keep this to a minimum. It's not going to really value add to your essay too much. It should be clear, it should be concise, well written, um, but don't spend a lot of time retelling the story here. The most important part of your introduction is the contention. So your response to the essay topic and also you outlining the three main ideas. So what are the ideas that each of those body paragraphs are going to be about? Let's have a look at this example. So opening sentence. The crucible and the dressmaker both convey 
the internal and external consequences of repressed guilt experienced by those living in insular communities where patriarchal hierarchies dictate order. So it says about what both texts are about. Then I'll give the details for the crucible. So in the crucible set in 1692 Salem, Massachusetts, playwright Arthur Miller depicts the struggles of adulterer John Proctor at the centre of the witch trials in a conservative Puritan town plagued by hypocrisy. Notice how I haven't gone into detail that Abigail, Elizabeth, Giles being crushed to death. We just want to get to the point. I'm then going to say in contrast, because this is the task in contrast and comparison. So Rosalie Hams, the dressmaker, explores the life of Dungata outcast Molly and Tilly Dunnage. Set against the 20th century rural Australian backdrop, the township and their social conventions exclude the Dunnage women from Dungata society and ultimately lead to violent and deadly consequences. Again, not talking about Teddy suffocating in the silo, not talking about the town burning down. You just want to say overall the plot. This is where the big money points are. Um, so make sure that you answer the essay topic. And this introduction links to the plan that was shown on the previous slide. So the contention is both texts explore the relationship between judgment, forgiveness and atonement. I'm going really simple for this one, um, just in order to give you a good idea, but it should relate to the essay topic overall. I'll then go through what my three main ideas were for my plan. So Miller and Ham both consider the impact of restrictive and critical communities, while also juxtaposing the way a person chooses to forgive past hurts in order to move forward. Moreover, the crucible and the dressmaker at the very core depict the consequences of judgment and highlight the punishments inflicted as a result. Again, when I'm giving my ideas here, I'm not going through any of the evidence or any of the examples. What are the ideas? Tip number four. Once you get up to your body paragraphs, you should continue to use the to seal for side by side comparison. This is a more thorough way of answering the topic. As I said, there are other models that you can use and judging on the question you are given. Um, but this is the one that I kind of promote because it is, as I said, much more thorough. It's important that you have that topic sentence, which expresses the main idea of the paragraph and covers both texts. When giving your evidence and your explanation for text A, you should have meaningful and frequent quotations from the text. There is no excuse for not having these. You should recap your event as quickly as possible, remembering that the person who is reading your essay is an expert on this text. You need to show text detail in a really succinct way without retelling the story over and over and over again too much. The big money points are in the way that you explain the evidence in reference to the topic sentence. Keep coming back to those big ideas. You should then transition to a comparative statement. So say how these two texts are interlinked. Remembering again that they are not the same. They may have a similarity, but in some ways they are different too. So you have to address both. You'll then go on to give your brief evidence from text B, including the event and the quotes. Again, summarized, and then really link into that text B explanation. So explain how this links to the topic, but overall continue here to compare it to text A. So say unlike the crucible or different to the way Proctor presented himself um, in slight difference to the previous example, you want to keep discussing the comparison in this point as well. You should then end your paragraph with a linking sentence that comes back to the topic sentence and the overall contention of the essay. Here's an example of what that would look like. 
I've kind of designed it here to look a bit like a Big Mac burger. So you have the top of the bun, the middle of the bun and the bottom in yellow, but also that evidence and explanation that really shows your understanding of the crucible in green, but also of the dressmaker in pink. Let's read through it together. Public scrutiny and private condemnation is depicted as running rampant in the conservative and institutionalised towns of Salem and Dungatar, with many judged for their perceived sins by the righteous and highly religious townspeople. So we can see here, I haven't said Proctor, Abigail, Tilly. This is about the main idea for the paragraph, and it's about how public and private condemnation in these types of towns leads to judgment and of course some really serious consequences. Then I'll start with the crucible. It doesn't really matter which order you put it in, um, but today I've picked the crucible to go first. So Miller delineates in the crucible that such public judgment can lead to gossiping and exclusion in Salem. Framed by Abigail Williams' scandalous expulsion from the Proctor household, Miller explores how Goody Proctor blackens Abigail's name in the town. This blush about Abigail's name ensured that no other family had ever called for her service. Abigail's uncle, Reverend Paris, sees the reputational damage caused by such allegations. Acknowledging that he has heard whisperings, Goody Proctor would not sit next to sorry, would not sit so close to something soiled. It is this close-knit structure of the Salem community which outcasts the inappropriate and unethical Abigail, leading to the crisis point in the novel where Abigail seeks vengeance on Goody Proctor. So we can see there that the explanation, the evidence and the quotes are all intermingled together. We can see they're talking about reputational damage, the close-knit structure, outcasts that we're being really thematic but also there are plenty of quotes to express that you know this text really well. Then I'll move into my comparison. So while Abigail Mailt may be guilty of her sins and judgment fairly cast, Hams the dressmaker unpacks a society which also crucifies outcasts. However in Dungata the victim is much more harshly persecuted despite being innocent of the wrongdoing. As such, the accusations and spiteful actions cast by this insular community is wrongfully placed. So we can see here that I'm acknowledging that Abigail and Tilly are both judged, but I'm not saying, yeah, Abigail and Tilly are the same because they are both judged for their sins. I'm saying, yep, they are, but also that Abigail um, did actually commit the act of adultery, whereas Tilly actually didn't murder um, Stuart Pettyman. So it's important while I've acknowledged the similarity, in the same breath I've acknowledged the difference. So Dungatar's bastard and illegitimate child Tilly Dunnage returns from exile to the same close-minded and vindictive town. Ham highlights the ongoing judgment of Tilly during her outing with local star full forward Teddy McSweeney. Teddy's bold move to take Tilly to the footballers dance left the townspeople speechless with disgust and Beulah Harradine arriving to debrief with Sergeant Farrett the following morning full of hate and accusations. Much like Abigail, Tilly's ongoing scrutiny at the hands of the Dungatart people was the catalyst for Tilly's revenge and their violent fiery undoing. In juxtaposition, the suspicious women who gossiped about Abigail Williams showcased the power of a community to uphold social order and expectations, whereas the townspeople of Dungata wrongfully ridiculed and condemned Tilly for something she did not do. So while I'm explaining the stuff about the dressmaker, I explain it by comparing it to the crucible. And it's really important that when you do this second explanation that the more that you can talk about the similarities and differences to the first bit of evidence that you do that. You then need to finish off the paragraph by coming back to the key idea, which was as such both texts consider 
the way judgment manifests like wildfire in secular communities, yet contrasts whether this judgment is warranted or not. So I know that that can be a little bit complex by doing similarity and difference, but it's really important if you want to end up in that high range bracket um, that you stop and that you don't keep saying that both texts are the same, that you look at similarity, difference, and that you start to balance out your paragraph. By balance, I mean that you have evidence and explanation for the crucible, evidence and explanation for the dressmaker, and a whole heap of comparison. To help you lift your essay to that next level, um, it's important that you include comparative sentence starters and that you start to use that vocabulary. You want your sentences to flow. Um, you don't want it to be too stop-start. So here's a list that you can screenshot or use for later. Um, st practice stems for comparison, but also for contrast. You will need both. My favorite ones to show difference, um, saying things that like in much the same way, or they react similarly, but for different reasons, um, are really good because they are a bit gray area. Similarly, using things like, however they different in their outlook or um, in a differing situation, we can actually try to really pull out those similarities and differences. If you need help upskilling your vocabulary overall, um, this is something that you can use. Again, you can screenshot this for yourself. Um, all of these are linked to the key themes of this text and can help you to improve your word choice because, again, part of what you'll be assessed on is your ability to write fluently but also in an expressive manner. So if you can change something, so say instead of saying, uh, let's pick one, social order. Instead of saying the community had a ranking, instead you could say community had a social order. So swap where you can for more complex terminology. Coming to a close, um, my number one tip to leave you with today is that exemplar essays are your best friend. So you should see your teacher or perhaps they're already up on your class page or your class OneNote if you have one. So using Past example essays can be really helpful. Read them, consider how the topic was unpacked by this student and how they chose to respond. So what were their topic sentences? What examples did they use? What quotes have been used? Because again, that's a great way of acquiring a few more that you might have missed. But also really importantly, what language has been used by the writer? How have they expressed themselves? Is there some terminology that you can add to your vocabulary? So as much as you can, read as many sample pieces, whether they're just short passages, introductions, full essays, to help you really upskill on all of the things that we've done today. So I hope that you found this really helpful and please reach out to your teacher if you need any further assistance with comparative essay writing.